I'm Donna and I'm from the Yoga Vine. Today's 45 minute class will be a strong flow. Uh, then we're concentrating on hips mainly today. So we'll get down low and open up the hips up and finish with a nice Shavasana. So when you're ready, lay down on your back. <clears throat> and we're just going to take the feet, soles of the feet together and lay down, just pressing, just gently pressing on the knees and just opening up the hips. Keeping the spine really long by drawing your chin down into your chest. And just take a few rounds of breath. Feel the broadness come into your collarbones, a bit of a lift in the heart. Lengthening the tailbone down towards your heels. Taking that little back bend out of your back if you can. And then on your inhale, bring both knees together. Bring the knees up over the hips and just parallel your shin bones to the floor. Take the arms out wide and start with a twist over to the right. And if it's comfortable for the neck, just look over the fingertips of your left hand. Maybe a little squeeze into the knees by bringing that right hand down onto the top of your left knee. And then inhale, come back up to the middle. Swing on over to the other side. Left hand on top of right knee, stretch that right arm out. Gaze over the fingertips or look straight up. And just see if you can spiral the ribs back to the floor a little bit. Trying to press that right shoulder blade back down. And on your inhale, come back up to the middle. And we're just going to extend that left leg out. Take your right leg up. Hold on to the back of the leg somewhere, maybe cradle the knee or if you can reach the ankle, reach up and just gently drawing the leg down towards the chest and just getting a little bit of an openness through the back of the leg, hamstring. Try to be soft in the knee, keeping the, the knee joint really loose. Don't lock it in at all. So you just start to feel that in the upper hamstring and then switch to the other side. Same thing, hold the back of the knee if you need that support, otherwise grab hold of your ankle. Really softly bending the knee. A couple of nice deep breaths into the back of the leg. And then release. So holding both knees into the chest. Rock yourself up to sitting and step back to your first downward dog. Take up the whole length of your mat, place the hands down flat. Just dropping the head down between the arms. Hug your arm bones in towards your ears a little bit here. Support the wrists by really pressing the hands into the floor. And letting that whole upper back area start to melt a little bit. If it starts to go into the shoulders at all, push the back ribs up. Some people are a little bit more flexible through the upper back and can easily drop here. If that's you and it feels good, go for it. Otherwise, keep a little bit of firmness in the front of your body. So pull your ribs up a little bit, puff into your upper back. And just take one more breath. And then looking up to the top of the mat, just take a few steps, walk on up. Roll yourself all the way up to standing. And then when you reach the top, take the arms up above the head, look up and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step back to plank. Knees, chest and chin if you're injured or if you're just taking it easy today. Curl on up, cobra pose and exhale, press back onto your knees, flip your toes under and press back to down dog. So you can continue with that style. If you're supporting your body through some sort of injury or if you're just woken up and your body isn't quite warmed up, just being really gentle on the body if you need to be. And we can definitely amp it up a little bit with your vinyasas, building heat. Just maintain softness through your joints, so just a little tiny bend in your knees. And then when you're ready, inhale, lift the heels, look forward, stepping or walking the feet up to the hands, look up and lengthen the spine and fold back down again, exhale. Inhale, come to stand, reach both arms up. And exhale, folding back down over the legs, nice and strong through the legs, drop the head, look up and lengthen again. And on your exhale, step back to plank. So continue with knees, chest and chin, otherwise lower down now, chest towards the thumbs. Inhale to cobra shoulders back and exhale, press back up to plank and push back to downward dog. So taking some really deep breaths here, really fill up, feel the strength in the arms, lift the sit bones up as high as you can, tuck the front ribs in.
and then lifting the heels again, look forward, stepping both feet back up to the top of your mat. Lengthen and fold back down, exhale. Inhale, come all the way up. Last round, exhale, fold. Look up, lengthen everything, draw the belly in, exhale, step back to plank, lower down, lifting knees and thighs for up dog, maybe exhale, downward dog. And so we'll start with a gentle hip opener, taking your right leg up into the air, bend the knee, open the hip, flex the toes, get some space between the toes, try to keep the shoulders square so you're pressing that right armpit down to the floor, and then square it up. Straighten the right leg and exhale, bring it down. Take your left leg up, bend the knee, and draw that knee right up to the sky. And you'll notice how you drop straight away into your opposite shoulder. So just try to keep the shoulders as square as you can, flexing the toes, keep lifting the knee. Press your right heel back and then release. Take an inhale up onto your tippy toes, look forward, step or maybe jump back. Look up and then fold back down with your nice flat back. Inhale, come all the way back up. Exhale, hands into the heart. And we'll go through, taking our time to really focus on the hips now, get nice and strong. Bending both knees down, draw your belly in, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward and down. Inhale, look up, lengthen. Exhale, step back into your plank. Lower down, chaturanga. Keep your elbows nice and close to the body. Inhale, roll over the toes, look up, and exhale to downward dog. So right leg up into the air to begin. Take a big, long breath there, and exhale. Step it all the way through to meet your hands. Drop your left knee down to the floor. And we'll just take the hands behind the back. Stay here with the knee on the floor for the first round. There's the option to come up if you like. Otherwise, keep it down. Roll the shoulders back. I'm just going to really get into the front of the hip as well. So start to press forward. So you're bringing that right hip down towards your right heel. And if you like to take a little bit extra in the chest, look up. See if you can get your fingertips down to the floor behind you. And release. Both hands down. Step back to downward dog. Nice big breath in and out here. And then stepping left foot forward. Right knee goes down to the floor. Inhale, come back up and really press forward here and feel that drop of the left hip down. Lift the chest. And then if you've got a little bit more juice through the front of that right leg, you're going to really press forward. Maybe try to squeeze the shoulder blades together rather than pull the shoulders right back. So really concentrate on the middle upper back. And release. Step back to downward dog. Take the feet quite wide apart with this down dog and just bending into the knees a little bit more now press the chest towards the thighs and just get a little bit of space in the pelvic floor start to feel the sit bones spread apart a little bit and then step the feet back together again look forward step walk or jump the feet look up lengthen it out and fold exhale Bend both knees, really pull the thigh bones back in, inhale, exhale, fold forward, drop the head down, inhale, look up, lengthen, exhale, step or jump back to plank, lower down, chaturanga, inhale, lift the heart, exhale, down dog. So this time, right leg up and back, exhale, step it through, bring your right hand to the inside of your right foot. And we're just going to let that walk, uh, walk out just a little bit to the long edge of your mat. Option to drop the knee down here or you can keep it lifted. And then we're really just going to try and open up this hip by letting the knee fall out to the side. So let it drop, be on the outside edge of your right foot. And if possible, you're going to try to get down onto the elbows here. So reach forward. I like to press my hands flat and pull my chest forward, pull my heart forward. And just keep a little bit of a lift in the chest there rolling to the outside edge of the foot so you really start to feel that hip open up to the outer edge of your hip taking one more breath and then walk the hands back in step back to downward dog take a nice big inhale and exhale and then taking your left leg up and back step it all the way through bring both hands to the inside drop the knee down maybe or keep it lifted and then walk the hands forward 
option to go down onto the elbows. So again, just whatever your body, body feels uh, safe for you. You want to be able to feel like you're dealing with the sensations in the body. You don't want any pain anywhere. If you feel the knee at all, you'll just back right off. So just feeling into that left hip now. Reach the chest forward. Take the little curve out of your upper back if you can. Outer edge of that left foot, really drop the knee. Get really soft through the back of your knee. That helps a little bit. And then we'll walk it back in. Step your left foot all the way back, downward dog, and breathe. Take just a few breaths. We're going to add on to that. So we'll start with the right leg. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, step it all the way through. Drop onto the back knee. We're going to walk this right foot back and we're going to be on the outside edge of your left foot here. So just drop the hip right down to the floor and take this right arm and reach it to the back of the mat. And as you reach, push the floor away from you here. Nice and long through the neck, long through the spine. And on your inhale, lift the hip and stretch that right arm over. On your exhale, drop it down and do two more. Inhale, reach. Exhale, drop. Inhale, reach. Exhale, drop. And stretch it out, lift the chest. One more nice deep breath. And then we're gonna lift the hip again. Take this right foot, walk it all the way back. Start to reach your right arm up. Stack the feet on top of each other. And if that feels like it's too much, you could keep that right foot on the floor. And just start to lift the chest, press that left hip away from the floor. and then release, bring your right hand back to the floor, step back to downward dog, take a nice big inhale and exhale. And then taking that left foot up into the air, inhale and exhale, step it all the way through. So we're gonna roll onto the outside edge of the right foot this time. Drop that right hip to the floor and reach back with your left hand and push the floor away from you. Lift the chest, squeeze the inner thighs together. You get this lovely stretch in the outside of the hip as well as getting this stretch through the right side of the body. Back of the mat as you reach with your left hand, take an inhale and then exhale, lift up. And take it back to the floor. Take another inhale, reach up. And back down to the floor. One more time, inhale. And exhale, release. And then keeping your foot where it is, start to take it up into that side plank. So you want to make sure that the elbow is directly underneath the shoulder here. So make sure that that's aligned. And then taking your right, left arm, I'm sorry, reaching all the way up. If you're going a little bit further, you'll sweep your left foot back. Gaze is down or to the side or up. Keep pressing the floor away from you, rolling the right shoulder back. One or two more breaths. And then we'll release. Step it all the way back into downward dog. Just a couple of nice big inhales and exhales. If you need to break it off through your shoulders, you'll drop onto your knees and take child's pose instead. Last breath. And then looking forward, come high up onto your tippy toes, bend the knees and hop. Look up, lengthen everything out as you fold the chest back down towards your thighs, bending both knees again, inhale. Reach both arms up, Utkatasana. Tuck the tailbone under, drop your shoulders. Get really strong through those thighs, draw them up, and then on your exhale, fold forward and down. Inhale, look up. And exhale, step or hop back to plank. Lower everything to the floor. Cobra or up dog, your choice, and exhale to downward dog. Good. So, one more on each side. We're going to step our right foot to the front of the mat. So, inhale, lift, and exhale, step. This time, we're going to walk that right foot all the way over to the left side of the mat and drop the knee down and come into pigeon. So your left hip is going to press towards this um, right heel. As much as you can, try to square your hips up. And then we're going to take the hands behind the back, take an inhale, lift, and exhale. And just hang here for a couple of breaths, feeling that right hip, stretching the chest forward. Maybe get your chin to the floor if you can.
and then inhale here, exhale lift. Inhale lower down, exhale lift. Inhale lower down and exhale lift. Two more. Inhale, stretch the chest forward, exhale and inhale, exhale. And then bring both hands back to the floor again. Try to turn the back toes under and lift the knee first. Then lift both knees at the same time. Step back to downward dog. And we'll step forward with our left leg. So inhale, left leg goes up. And exhale, step it through. Walk it over to the right side of your mat. Drop the knee down. So have that right leg just coming out straight out from behind you, straight out from behind the hip. If you can get the shin bone parallel with the front of your mat, go for it, but the heel can come in if you're needing to support your knee. So wherever feels comfortable, square up the hips as much as possible, hands behind the back. Inhale, hold it there. Exhale, lower down, and just take a couple of breaths. Really start to draw down into the hip joint there with that thigh, so hugging it back into the middle of your mat. Maybe bring the chin to the floor if you can. And then inhaling and exhaling, lifting. Inhale, drop it down. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Inhale, drop. Exhale, lift. Last one. And then release both hands, come down to the floor. Turn your back toes under, lift the knee. Both knees come up. Step back to downward dog, stretch everything out. If you need to pedal your legs at all, just get a bit of movement back into the outer hips. And then hugging those arm bones back into the ears, support the shoulders, support the wrists. And then we're gonna to look to the top of the mat, stepping both feet to the outside edges of your mat. I'm just gonna turn around so I can face you here. You wanna go wider than the hips, so feet will be as parallel as you can get them and we're coming down into malasana, into a squat. I really try to get my elbows and shoulders as far in front of my thighs as I possibly can. So if you can snuggle forward. Uh, if you find it hard to get down onto the floor on flat feet, just roll your mat up. It's a good little tip. And just wedge it underneath your heels and give that a go as well. You can always use something else if you've got something at home that you prefer. So really wide. Toes can turn out, definitely, but you don't want to feel like you're twisting your knees. So if you can get them to come back in again once you're down in your squat, do the best that you can to get in. And then hands into the chest, lift up. And just feel the lift in your spine, drop the hips down. You can close your eyes here, you can zone out, do whatever you want, sway a little bit, feels quite nice. And then we did say we were doing hips today. So this is a bit full on. If you're happy here and staying here, just be here for a few breaths. I want you to take the right hand to the floor and stretch all the way out. Coming a little bit further, taking that left arm up. And just see if you can open the chest up here in a twist. And then those that want more still, turn both hands to face the back of the room and take the bind behind that right leg. Twist and look up to the sky, rolling the left shoulder back. Nice broad collarbones, keep sinking the hips. And we'll release. Coming back to the centre again, snuggle the shoulders back in, lift the chest. And then we'll do the other side. So straight out with that left hand, fingertips to the floor, let that right shoulder, right elbow release and open, broaden, keep breathing. Notice that the breath shortens a little bit here when we're twisting, so keep the breath going as deep as you can. Those that want more still, hands turn to face the back of the room, bend both elbows and link behind that left thigh or left hip, wherever they kind of connect back there. Keep breathing really deeply, roll that left shoulder back, roll your right shoulder back. And release, come back to the center, lift the chest up, inhale. And then exhale, bring both hands down. And what we're going to do is bring the feet together from this position. So walk them back in, sit down on your heels, take the knees out of the way and come into crow pose. So a couple of options for crow is that you can just come into a baby crow, a baby bakasana, and that is just with the uh, forearms on the floor. 
It's deceptively hard, so it's actually probably the harder of the two options, but we'll um, give it a go anyway. So this one is for those that want a bit of a challenge, actually. So squeeze the knees up into the backs of the arms and keep the elbows down. So traditionally, we're up here. This one is down nice and low. So keep everything really small, as small and compact as you can, and then start to lean forward, lean those elbows, press them into the floor, bring your chest forward, backs of the um, arms are really pressing down, and then start to lift the feet up. Keep drawing the belly in. Look forward. And then lower all the way down and take Traditional crow pose, so hands down, this time elbows will lift up. Take the knees, park them in the upper arm so they sit up as high as possible because what will happen is they'll tend to slip down. So you want to start as high as possible. Lean the chest forward, pick the feet up. Maybe it's just one foot, maybe it's both. And just see if you can straighten your arms up a little bit as well. And then as you come back down, let the feet come out wide. Come back into your squat. Take a few breaths, sit up nice and tall. And then bring both hands down, bring the knees together and sit back in between your heels. So tucking the tailbone under when you get there. I'm just gonna take a couple of inhales, lift the chest and exhale, curl. And inhale, lift and exhale, curl. And lift, inhale, shoulders back. Exhale, collapse and let go. Inhale, lift and exhale. And then come back to neutral. So pulling the feet in nice and close. You don't want to be sitting on the heels here. So just have them snuggled in nice and close to the hips. We're just going to stretch out these quads a little bit more in preparation for our next attempt at opening the hips up. So pressing the kneecaps towards the top of the mat, see if you can feel a bit of space coming to the hip flexor here. So this, I'm aiming to get as much length through the tops of these legs as possible. And then just sitting up nice and tall, roll your shoulders back. This can be really challenging. It was one of the first poses that really challenged me. I couldn't sit in it for very long. And over time, the knees, um, the muscles and ligaments really get strong and it becomes a lot easier. You can also pop a block under your butt if it feels like that's too low and it's too much. Sometimes the ankles can feel a little bit sore as well. So sit yourself up a little bit higher, that helps. So just a couple more breaths here. And just be in it. Feel the sensations in the body. and then release. So we'll bring hands to the floor, sit up, and you'll want to just undo this a little bit in the hip flexor. So sit with the knees wide for a moment, sit back on your heels, stretch out, and that'll give you instant relief. So just have a couple of breaths there. And then coming back up into downward dog, big stretch, everything out. Backs of the knees might need a little bit extra love, so give the legs a bit of a pedal. And then looking up to the top of the mat, step both feet up. And again, we're going to come in about hip width apart. And we're going to come down into that squat again. So getting the shoulders and elbows back into the inner thighs, snuggle them as close to the inner thighs as you can, and then press the hands together and sit up as tall as you can just to feel that connection back into the hips. And we're gonna go standing in a moment. So just to feel that openness, come back into the hips. And then what we're gonna do is release the hands and come up into a bit of a half squat here. So you're lifting up, pulling everything back up into these hips. We're gonna take the right arm underneath the back of the right leg. And I just, I really like to grab hold of the, the back of the, um, ankle here and really snuggle the shoulder under, get it under as, as far under as I can. And then you're going to release this right hand, turn the palm to face the back of the room and flick it up your back. And then this left hand is going to come around as well. And you're going to see if you can find some fingertips back there to hold onto. And maybe you might even grab a wrist. So if you're grabbing hold of the wrist, the right hand grabs the left wrist. And then you're just going to try and straighten up the legs as much as you can. You can stay really bent here. Those that want a bit more of a challenge, straighten. Look up over that left shoulder. And just let all tension come out of the neck here. There should be nothing in the neck. You can really feel the hips. And there's a nice stretch through the hamstrings as well. 
and then release, come back into your squat. Snuggle, snuggle, get nice and tall again. And then we'll do the other side. So release, left arm comes under the back of the knee, snuggle the shoulder under, release your left hand up your back, right hand joins it, grab fingertips, whatever you can, or the wrist of your right hand this time. And then we're gonna try and straighten the legs, little twist, look up over your right shoulder. Lose any tension in the neck. And just feel if you can even the hips up as much as possible. That right leg will be straighter than the left, which is completely fine if it is. The challenge is to try to straighten both legs. And then release, come back into your squat. Take a couple of deep breaths, we're gonna add on to that. So from this position, we're gonna come back up again and take hold of the back of the leg again. And I might just turn around here so you can get the side view of this one. So right shoulder first comes under the back of the knee. We're just gonna step this left foot out of the way for a moment and keep the left hand on the floor, maybe just a little bit outside the shoulder. So come off your mat a little bit. We're gonna snuggle that right shoulder under as far as we can. And then we're gonna to try to put all the weight in that right foot and take the left foot up off the floor. And it might only come up a couple of inches. You might start there. There might be a lot in the hip. So if it is, just breathe and hold it there. And then release. So if you wanna add on to that, coming a little bit further, keep the hand on the floor, lean all your weight into your right foot, lift that left foot up, and as soon as it's off the floor, grab it and pull the heel up towards your butt. And then you're just gonna try and lift that leg up, bring the knee up as high as you can. Push into your hand with the foot, almost like you wanna straighten the leg out. It's a big, big, big stretch in the hip. Keep breathing. And then release. Take your right arm out, take a squat, because that's gonna feel good at the end of that. And then we'll do the other side. So left side around this way. Take your left arm underneath. Your right hand's gonna come out a little bit further away from the shoulder. Step your right foot out of the way. Just move that for now. And then again, start with just putting the weight into the left foot and taking the right foot off the floor. For me, this is my hard side, so it feels a lot harder on this side already. So, you know, I might just go to here, but I'm gonna give it a go. So I'm gonna step back again and just snuggle under a little bit more. Take the right foot up, grab that foot straight away with the left hand, and straight away I'm gonna try and lift up and straighten the left leg. Keep your gaze directly down from the eyes, so you don't wanna be looking back at all, otherwise you may feel like you're gonna to topple. So just look straight down. And then release. Right foot to the floor. Take a squat, which feels really good after that. Nice big breath in and out. And then we'll just bring the hands down onto the floor, take child's pose, so knees out wide. Get some relief through the back as well. Stretch both arms out, head down to the floor, chin or chest, uh, sorry, chin or forehead down to the floor. And just a couple of nice deep breaths here. Feel the length in the sides of your body. And then inhale, coming all the way back up and step back to downward dog. Downward dog will feel really nice after you've done that. Opened up the hips and got a nice big stretch through the quads. If you need some support, always pedal the legs or stay longer in child's pose. And then look forward. We're going to step our right foot to the front of the mat. And we're going to come to the outside edge. I might turn around this way, actually. Outside edge here of uh, the left foot. And keep that left hand directly underneath the shoulder. Walk it back. And we'll just take a nice stretch here with that right arm reaching. One more big breath. And then we'll just keep looking at the ground so that you can transition this right foot to the back of the mat now. So take the right foot behind you. And we're just gonna flip the dog, reach back, get a nice big stretch in the chest. And then release. Come to the other side. So turning onto the outside edge 
of your right foot this time. Left foot steps in front, just make sure the wrist, elbow and shoulder stay in line and then a nice big stretch. So you really want to push this hip away from the floor and lengthen through the side of your body. Draw the shoulders down, support this shoulder by rolling the shoulder back a little bit. And then when you're ready, look down, watch what's happening with your left foot, step it over nice and quickly and then take a big stretch. And coming all the way back. Take a vinyasa here, so shoulders over the wrists on your inhale and then exhale lower. Inhale, look up. Exhale, downward dog. And then we're going to just drop both knees to the floor. I'm going to turn around again. This time we're going to keep the right knee on the floor. Take this left leg out to the side. And we're just trying to keep the hips as square as we possibly can here. We're going to take another stretch through the sides of the body. So let this left hand come down onto the left leg. Flip the palm. Take your right arm up and over. And we're still getting into the hips a little bit there. You might feel it at the front of the hip here, the outer hip gets a little stretch as well. So it's a really nice all-rounder and it feels quite good. And then come back to centre, drop the left knee down, take your right leg out. Try to have that outside edge of the foot straight with the edge of the mat as well. So we're not turning the toes out at all, keeping that foot straight. And then drop that right hand down, have the palm facing up, take your left arm up. And you'll notice if you're a little bit out on one side, you'll feel it in this particular stretch. So for me, lower back on this side is a little tight today, so I can really feel this stretch. So I might not go as far, but it still feels quite good. And then come back to the center. Bring your right knee back down again, and I'll flip around again. So we're going to take camel pose, feeling the legs and getting a nice stretch through those quads again. And drawing the strength from the hips here so that we don't go into our lower back. So easy version is just to keep the heels up. And we're actually just going to take a couple of little variations before we come back into that camel pose. So just reach back with your left hand and grab your left heel. Sweep this right arm up and over. And then come back down again, reach back with the right hand, sweep the left arm over. And we'll do two more on each side. So inhale and reach. And exhale, transition to the other side. One more on each side. Inhale, sweep that right arm back. And one more on the other side. Sweep it back. And back to centre. So we can keep our feet where they are or you can flip them down. Just depends on what you like in your back. If you need the extra support, then I would recommend just flipping the toes under and keeping the heels up so that it's not as far to go. The focus here is on the legs and keeping the legs really strong. So if you have a block at home, you could put a block between your legs. That's really useful. And just helps keep the focus on the legs and keeping them strong. So grab it if you need it. Pop it between the thighs. Keep the toes turned under for that supportive... Um, camel or if you know that your lower back's pretty good and you like a big chest open or a big dip here you'll flip the toes under and reach back for your heels so start with the hands in the middle of the chest and just see if you can push the chest up into the thumbs and rather than thinking about getting into this and back bending think about lifting the front of your body and get really open through the front of the body so nice big breaths take your time coming back to the um tendency is to just drop straight back into the flexible bit, which for most of us is the, is the lower back because the upper back is tight. So do what you can to shift the curve of your spine from the lower back into your upper back. And to do that, think about your ribs lifting up. So just keep that in mind as you start to lower back. So I'm going to flip my toes under for this one. So take an inhale, lift the heart up into the hands and then drop them back, find your heels. And you might even drop back a little bit to get there, which is fine. Once you're back and you're holding on, press the hips forward again, lift the chest up. If it feels okay to drop the head back, drop it back. And just take four or five breaths. Dropping the hips back to come back up again. Press the hands into the heart. And just to counter pose that, sit back down. Heels and butt, or you can just come down in between the heels. And then just fold forward so that you release your lower back. 
Just take a few breaths there, just letting it lengthen out again. And then slowly start to come back up. Place both hands on the floor, step back to downward dog. Stretch it all out. Head drops down between the arms again. Shake out any tension in the neck at all. So dropping back onto the knees again. We're gonna turn your left knee out and sit down, taking this right leg out straight and then just open it up a little bit so we're in a little bit of a, a 90 degree angle. And then we're just going to take the right hand down to the floor. And again, if you've got a block handy, you could put a block underneath that forearm and just support yourself a little bit. Otherwise, elbow comes down to the floor, take your left arm up and then spiral the chest open. You might even be able to reach down and grab hold of the foot, but it's no big deal if you don't get there. What you're looking for is a nice big stretch in the side body. You've got the hips nice and open. Some of you may be able to reach down with your right hand and grab the heel and come all the way down, but don't compromise the pose and drop into it just to get there. Keep the lift in the chest and just keep that opening in the heart. The ribs pop up. Take a nice deep breath here and then come back to the center and we'll switch to the other side. So extend that left leg out, bring your right leg in. And you're at about 90 degrees. And then elbow comes down to the floor. And again, block if you need it. Take your right arm up, big inhale, and then exhale, stretch it on over. A little bit of a spiral in your chest. Stay with the breath as much as you can here. It gets really difficult to breathe when we get into deep twisting as well. So as best you can, keeping your breath moving in and out through your nose. And then come back to the center. And we'll take both legs out now. So bring that right leg out. You want to feel a good stretch here, but um, if you are really flexible, you could come out a little bit wider. But I just recommend going into a, a, a spread that feels like you're getting a nice stretch through the inner groin, so you don't want to go super, super wide. So taking the hands behind you if you need some support, and just press the hands into the floor. The elbows can push into the back of the body to keep you lifted. So that's a nice way to start if you need that support. And if you can hold that there, and you don't feel like you're going to rock back, keep the hands in now. Lift the chest up. We're going to come forward as far as you can. So you're just going to walk as far forward as you can. You don't want to be pulling into the hamstring. So bend the knees if you start to feel anything. And then just bring yourself down onto the elbows. For some of you that are really flexible and the lower back feels good, you're going to reach out and grab the big toes. And just rather than think about getting your head to the floor or your forehead to the floor, think about getting your chin to the floor and just hovering it so that you keep reaching the chest forward and bring your belly to the floor. So just five breaths here coming down to wherever feels good. Keep lifting the shoulders back. And it's almost as if you're doing a little cobra pose as you reach forward here. So again, taking that shell out of your back and popping the chest up instead. Keeping really long in the spine, pressing the backs of the knees down. If you feel like the hamstrings need some support, then just bend the knees a little bit. And then inhale, come all the way back up. Bring the feet back together. And a nice Baddha Konasana, you can go up really high bring the heels up nice and high, or you could open it up a little bit and go a little bit softer. So it's completely up to you. And just folding forward here, let your back round this time. So just curl on down, bring the head down towards the feet. The feet will try and open up as much as you can get them open. and then come all the way back up and sit up. So we're gonna finish with headstand and we're gonna take a straddle headstand today since we're focusing on hips. So you can definitely come up to a wall and any solid wall or a tree in the park um, to support your uh, attempts at getting up um, or a person if you have a person to help out. Um, I find the easiest way to do this is hands down clasping on the floor but you can do a tripod as well, it's just up to you. So I'm gonna go with this one today um, making a little basket with my hands, my head's going to go in between that and I'm going to get onto the crown of my head. 
So tuck the chin in, make sure you're right on the top of the head and not too close to the forehead. And then I'm just gonna walk up, try to get my hips up. Straddle the legs out, get really strong through the feet and bring them up straight. So the more strength you have in your legs here, the easier this becomes. It, it's hard when the legs are really floppy, you feel like you don't have any control in it. So as soon as you get up there, pull the legs in tight. Imagine you've got a block between your thighs and you're squeezing that block with your thighs. So we'll have one more go and I'll show you the um, way to get into it from your tripod headstand. So hands down flat. And I like to do this and it's something that's really helped me. I just imagine that there's a triangle on my mat. My hands are on the base and my head is on the top of that. So just imagine your triangle, popping your head down on the top of that triangle, walking up, and then lift, take the feet out, press on up, squeeze your thighs together. And you can either come down with bent legs, straight legs, or the straddle back again. And then just Finishing with the head on the floor and just taking a little rest here in child's pose. And coming all the way back up. Hands and knees, press back to downward dog. And then look forward, stepping or hopping both feet. Look up, lengthen, stretch the body out and fold back down, exhale. Inhale, reach both arms up. We'll take a vinyasa, exhale, folding down to the floor. Inhale, look up, exhale, step or jump, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale to your cobra or up dog and exhale to your downward dog. And then we'll just come down onto our back. So look forward, hopping through to sitting. Lay all the way down, hug the knees back into the chest. And we'll just twist again the same way we did at the beginning. So knees up over the hips. We're going to add on to the twist now, rolling to the right first. And hopefully everything feels a little bit more stretched out in the back and through the hips. So we'll keep this top leg where it is. Stretch your right leg down to the bottom of the mat. And then with your left hand, you're going to reach down and see if you can find your foot down there. So bend your right knee up, grab hold of the foot. Left knee comes back to the floor if you can. Left shoulder rolls back to the floor. Again, twisting can get, make the breath a little bit shorter. So just really try to squeeze up into the upper chest with the breath, really spread it out. And release, come back to the middle. And over to the other side. Keep the right leg where it is drop the left leg down. And you really have to roll onto the outer hip to get into this a little bit. So knee comes to the floor, bending your left knee, reach down with that right hand, roll back onto the floor as much as you can. And release, coming back to the center again. Bringing both legs up now. And we're just gonna bend the knees and grab hold of the outside edges of the feet and just shift your elbows to the inside. Probably one of the uglier poses of yoga, but a really good hip opener. So just let the knees drop down and you don't wanna lift your butt up at all. So keep pressing the lower back and the tailbone down to the floor, chin to chest. You really wanna feel that lower back, the dip in the lower back, pressing flat onto the floor here. So once you've found that, then try to shrug your shoulders back Keep bringing that chin down to lengthen the neck out. And it also feels good just to kind of rock and roll around on your lower back. It's a nice little massage for the lower back. And release. Take the right leg over the left leg. Reach up to grab the outside edges of the feet. And then rather than pulling the legs down and bringing the heels down to your butt, I want you to pull them out to the long edge of the mat. So they may not go far, but you will feel this in the outer hips. So it's a strong one. So the feet press up into the hands, the hands press into the feet. And again, your butt might want to lift up off the floor. See if you can bring it down, drop your shoulders, chin to chest. This is a really good outer hip stretch. And if you're a runner or a cyclist, this is a good one to do. 
both before and after a ride or a run. And we'll do the other side. So release that left leg over the right. Curl up to grab hold of the feet. Remember not to drop the heels. There's some resistance here, so just create a little bit of resistance by pushing up and pulling down at the same time. You'll feel your left hip this time, so that'll start to warm up a little bit as you pull the legs out. Remember just to keep your butt down, your shoulders back. And release. So stretch your left leg out, keep your right leg in. And you can just hug the knee into the chest or you can grab hold of the, the foot and bring it back a little bit further up in towards the shoulder. Nice, big, full uh, chest still. So just breathing up into the chest, keep your shoulders back. And then switch to the other side. Relax both shoulders, keep the breath. You can close your eyes here as you warm down. Get ready for Shavasana. And release. So lay down, you're already halfway there. Let the legs come right out away from the um, edges of the mat so you can really exaggerate the legs and then drop your arms out. Take a little inhale here just to sort of walk your shoulders out from underneath you. Close your eyes. And then as you exhale, drop the shoulders back, bring your chin to your chest and just go through the joints in the body and just make sure that you have created a little bit of softness with your joints through your practice, letting everything go even more. Let go of that controlled breath now, that deep breathing and just come back to an, a regular breath. And you can stay for as long as you like here, but we'll just take a few breaths. Good held Shavasana would be around five minutes uh, if you don't have a lot of time, but if you've got the time, head for 10 minutes. Really re-energize and, and reconfigure the body for the rest of the day. Start to just wiggle the fingers and toes and slide the feet back together again. Lift the knees up, hug them into your chest, roll over to your right and gently press up to sitting. Cross the legs, hands to heart, bow your head down to your feet. And then inhale, come all the way back up. Namaste. Thank you.